Well, first of all, it's a good uh, capsule summary, uh, Brian. But uh, yeah, around, of course, the Silicon Valley Bank was taken over by the regulators on March 10th. But you can see it coming. You know, it was in distress. There was $40 billion, $40 billion pulled out of that bank in one day on Thursday, March 9th, the day before it was taken over. $40 billion just, you know, hit the road, just just left. It was a, it was a complete collapse. And uh, I was having a discussion with my editor, uh, my my managing editor of one of our publications, Strategic Intelligence. And we had, you know, you work a little bit in advance and I planned to write something for our uh, April issue on climate change. You know, it's a big subject and I had outlined it. And he said, Jim, we got to do this banking crisis. I said, of course, let's put climate change down the road. We'll work on the banking crisis. So I started researching and writing on Silicon Valley Bank. And then I, you know, I'll get into more detail, but two days later, they took over Signature Bank. So, well, we got two banks now. We got to, you know, zero in on this. It was a crypto connection and Signature. We'll talk more about that. And then the next day, uh, you know, First Republic hanging by a thread. You know, it's still it's still hanging by a thread, by the way. Again, we'll, we'll go over all this in more detail. And so I, I couldn't write fast enough because as I'm writing, the story is unfolding. And then you get all the corruption, um, you know, insiders selling stock before the crash. Mary Daly, the chief regulator, president of the Federal Reserve Bank in New York, she's running around uh, doing uh, the Elemental P plus and pride flag and all this stuff. Fine. That's, you know, it's a free country. You can do that if you like. But she wasn't running the bank and she knows nothing about risk management. She's a labor economist, protege of Janet Yellen, came up the ranks, but knows nothing about risk management or actually running a bank. So it, it just got worse. And then then here comes Credit Suisse, right? The one thing I know, um, you know, um, Maybe a little before your time, Brian, but there was a very, very popular uh, rock celebrity writer in the 1960s named Marianne Faithful. Uh, she had a great career, lots of hits, Mick Jagger's girlfriend, etc. But her summary of the 60s, she said, um, uh, if I wasn't there, it didn't happen. And I thought that was a very, very good way to put it. In her case, that was true. But I started to feel that way about financial crises. If I wasn't there, it didn't happen. I go back to uh, the Herstadt Bank collapse in 1974, which was a shock. That was uh, back before, uh, that, was a, that was a foreign exchange crisis, but it highlighted the fact that when European banks closed and the US banks were just opening, if you had a failure here, it never settled over here. It wasn't real time settlement. So it was just all these open positions of a bank that had just failed. Um, you know, the s &R crisis in the 1980s, the uh, Latin American debt crisis in the early to mid 1980s, the flash crash in 1987, the Mexican tequila crisis 1994, long-term capital Russia in 1998. Of course, I negotiated that bailout dot-com crash, 2007 mortgages, 2008, everything falls apart, 2020 COVID, and now today. So I've, you know, I've, I've, uh, I don't know if I'm a magnet for trouble, but I've seen my share of financial crises. Um, and as an analyst, they have certain things in common. You know, the, the, the entity is always different, the currency is always different, but the dynamics are very much the same. And the one thing I can say um, to our viewers is that this is not over. Um, there's been a little bit of a sigh of relief. Stock market rallied uh, a little bit toward the end of uh, uh, beginning of April. Um, you know, and OK, that's that's a normal reaction. But any any thought that the problem has been solved, the bail is complete, you're not going to hear more is just not true. Uh, there's more coming. Get ready for it. I can't tell you. I'm not going to, you know, pick a specific name, and we all know the names of the big banks that might be in distress. Um, what, you know, is Deutsche Bank or Barclays or HSBC Santander? I'm, again, I'm not picking on any of them. I'm just saying that there are more dominoes waiting to fall. The really interesting part about this, and again, we can come back to the specifics, is that the dominoes falling is a good metaphor. It's you know, you, if you knock, you got 100 dominoes, you knock the first one, they're all going to fall. That's just physics. Um, so how do you stop that? How do you stop that crisis? Well, you you truncate, you drop a steel wall between two dominoes, and this one hits the wall, and this one's still standing. But that's the bailout. But um, the problem is each crisis tends to get to get bigger than the one before, which means each bailout gets bigger than the one before. My question that I'm wrestling with: Are we now at the point where the need of bailout is? bigger than the capacity of the central banks, that they've they pulled all the rabbits out of the hat, played all their cards. And again, this goes back to what I did say about the Silicon Valley Bank rescue. It's, it is the biggest bailout in history, and I can explain why. But if that's the case, and what else do they have? And then, so now we're dangerously close to the point where in, as the crisis gets worse, it's no longer, oh, gee, let's wait for the Fed to bail it out, or let's wait for the ECB to bail it out. You get to the point, I think we're there, where you say, no, these guys actually can't stop it. And you lose you lose confidence in the currency itself. It's the dollar, the, 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 the crisis is the dollar itself, 
and the euro you know goes goes along with that uh, and then that's the crisis and there's no way to bail out a dollar crisis with dollars because you're just pumping more of what people have lost confidence in and then you know then where do you go and, and there, there are good answers to that we've seen it again we've seen it all before uh but you have to kind of take the timeline out to uh you know a thousand years or you know the 1350s with the failure of the Bardi and Peruzzi banks in Florence to see how these things can can really play out so this is big it's not over the um the regulators will attempt more bailouts but uh, we're, we're at the point where I think you can start to question the regulators themselves